So, for anyone that hasn't heard of Band of Skulls, can you tell me a little bit about your sound? Well, we're a three-piece band. Uh, I guess we're a rock band. We've got, we've got guitars. I think, uh, 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 basically, I managed to make this to be the, the biggest sounding band with the least um, sort of ingredients. <laughs> yeah. We've always tried to be as loud as possible and we're the biggest, smallest band. Yeah, <laughs> Brilliant. Um, you guys are from Southampton. Um, what would you say is your favourite venue down there? Yeah, I mean, there's, there's, there's some great ones, and I'm really glad some have survived. Um, we recently went back and played the Joiners, um, as you know, as all small venues at the, at the moment are finding it yeah. difficult. And uh, we uh, went down to play a show for them, and uh, and that was great too. That there, it brought back so many memories of. Um, playing there before and it, you know, it's a great venue um, yeah. and got so much history um, yeah that would be on my list and uh, we also recently played the Guild Hall I mean yeah I was there a year ago <laughs> and um, yeah I mean that one was on our that's kind of our teenage um, wish list that was on our kind of ambitions list when we were kids so um, a different size venue but equally as, as exciting today. yeah how do you feel about the situation um, that's going on with, with the local independent venues? Like, um, with Independent Venue Week and all that, um, they're having a real yeah, trouble. No, I was listening to that on, um, on the radio the other day, actually. Um, yeah. I believe it was, they were talking about the joiners. It was, um, it was Colin Greenwood. Um, oh, yeah. The radio head talking about mm-hmm. um, the Jericho Tavern in Oxford. I think every, every city has that equivalent venue, the one that is important, uh, that new bands will come and play before they get too big to play and that local bands can um, be the support bands. Uh, yeah. We did that um, and it's really important. So I think if they weren't there, we, it would be a shame. And I think if anyone can support them, if you, know, if you can go out and see a band now and again, you should, you should support the local venues. It's an important thing. Yeah. Um, as generally, do you prefer playing small or larger venues or does it kind of depend? Uh, well, I mean, they're equally, they're, they're, they're different. We did that join this one, and it was it was last summer. Yeah. It was one of those, it was one of those really hot days, so um, it was a brilliant combination. <laughs> so it was the most intense sort of experience <laughs> of that again. It was, wasn't just hotter than a small than usual, it was like extreme. <laughs> but yeah, you're so close to the audience, and it, yeah. it, it is a bit more of a challenge. I think often we might get more nervous on those smaller ones, because especially at home town. Mm. Yeah. It's, not, it's not impressive at the, st- you know, the stage you really have to play well and um, an audience can see if you've got the fear or anything like that in there so <laughs> uh, yeah those, those are really exciting for any band but some of the bigger venues are um, um, great to have a, a large audience watching, watching you well. yeah um, if you could tour with any band or artist who would it be and why um Yeah. Rather than um, to go and work with, because I don't know, sometimes it can take, you know, if you see a band for tw- 25 times every night in a row, it sort of slightly loses the magic. Yeah, you know? this is true. But, um, yeah, I don't know really. Um, I guess I'll go for someone that's dead, so then there's nothing going to happen. But, um, yeah, back in the late 60s, something like, well, to me, it'd be like Jimmy Hendrix experience. Yeah. So I think that would be exciting. Um, was there any reason, oh, I don't know where, actually whether you chose it, but you're um, doing a couple of London shows with Little Matador? Um, yeah, well, we, we heard about them through our, our booking agent. And yeah. I, and, um, yeah, it's interesting, actually, because it's, it's the guy from Snow Patrol. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, and, you know, obviously I, I, I know that band, mm-hmm. and I was expecting something a bit more, uh, um, sort of more gentle. And, and, uh, yeah. And, uh, Definitely. It's interesting, isn't it?
Mm-hmm. But, um, and of course, you can have bad days in, in both. Yeah. Um, you know, the show is not quite, or the tour can get quite difficult if it carries on and you get tired and you're away from home for a long time. Yeah. And recording can get difficult if you can't quite realise what you want to do. But, um, but we're very fortunate that we have great um, people that we work with and mm-hmm. a great um, crew and stuff. So we, we normally have a great time. And, Yeah. <laughs> okay, I've got some questions about the new album now. Um, why did you choose Himalayan as the title? Well, it's it's the title of one of the songs, mm-hmm. and I mean that that, that helps. But um, and then going back to the song, um, it was uh, the title's uh, idea idea of Emma's, and uh, I well just asked her at one point, but I think it was just, it was uh, almost coming up with a, a phrase that you would use in the street to describe. Oh yeah. But like coming up with a new slang word, like it's so, it's, it's, this thing is, you know, you know, it's so good that it's it's in the name. It's, yeah. It's so, <laughs> it's so big. <laughs> it's like uh, it's like Everest, and uh, I think that was our kind of. Um, I mean, we were quite ambitious on this record. And yeah. It was like a, it, I mean, a one-word manifesto. That's probably how I would put it. It was just like yeah. Uh, Yeah. And, um, uh, and yeah, and in the end, it felt like, you know, it's very difficult to name the whole record. Mm-hmm. And, um, and yeah, we like that one. It sounds good. And uh, when we got the artwork back, it kind of looked mysterious. Yeah, yeah, it does. It looked like some kind of, um, I don't know, like, uh, like a treasure, like, I don't know, something out of a, of a, of a, of a, of a monastery or something, like gold or something. <laughs> yeah. Differences between um, your first two albums and your forthcoming one that's coming out. Can you do again? The album. Sorry, yeah. What's the difference between the first two albums and the one that's coming out next? Yeah. Um, well, of course we've you know we've we've, we've made those other two albums. I think that's the main the main difference. Mm-hmm. Um, and all of that experience you do, you end up writing into your own context as a band. And so your first album is trying to get noticed. Mm-hmm. And, and, and try and find your own sound. I think it's, any, anyone's second record is all about um, showing that it's not just a you're not just a one trick or you yeah. know, a one trick pony, and and you have some depth and you can do something different. So this record for us was really, um, I think we really kind of boiled it down and and and, um, and really found the essence of the band. We, mm. we, we rehearsed and and wrote the most on this record. playing the songs in the studio in London and um, before we recorded and yeah we were just super strict yeah and whole sections were getting chopped chopped out songs and brutal it was just like yeah it was like I don't know we, we really were tough on the songs mm. and I think in the end it made them uh, more concise and yeah. hopefully better and kind of more, and more intense yeah. than what we've done before I think um, what have you learned, like, about making your albums? Have you kind of adapted yourself to fit any market, or have you just tried to like keep true to what you were doing in the first place? Well, yeah, I mean, it's, it's obviously like you know we have to survive, and, and we're an independent band. Um, you know, we can't afford to spend three years just um, you know experimenting or something like mm-hmm. that. You know, we we have to we have to live. So making a record for us. Yeah. Um, but I mean, beyond that, we just talk, we make the records for ourselves, really. Um, um, and yeah, we're, yeah, we're, we're writing into the context of us now, I think, mm. which is really interesting uh, uh, place to get to because we're not really fighting to be noticed on an initiative. It's more of a yeah. um, improving itself, and you know, our work we've done before is our gauge. So we always have to try and better that, and um, yeah, it, 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 it becomes a simpler recipe actually, mm. just to um, work in with, with each other.
Okay, which track from Himalayan are you most excited for like the public to hear? There's a song on the new record which is called, this is a long one, uh, I Feel Like Ten Men, Nine Dead and One Dying. And uh, yeah, I guess just um, one for the long title, I think that's, that's going to be exciting to, yeah. to try and remember it. And it's, a, it's, a, it's an idea of a song that we've had for a long time and it's sort of, yeah, it came to us when we were doing the record quite late on and, and it suited it perfectly. And uh, I think live it's going to, yeah. Yeah, I'm getting so excited for people to hear it, and then hopefully have a ticket to a show and look forward mm. to hearing it live. Because it, um, yeah, it's exciting. Um, what would you say are you most looking forward to right now, right this second? Right this second, well, mm -hmm. um, we're just you know what this is one of the first things we've done this year. Right? Oh yeah. Wow. And um, we're about to gonna go out on the on, on the promo world. And, yeah. Um, with our acoustic guitars and, and talk about this record a lot. Oh, so, wow. In fact, Matt's coming over to my house in a minute and we're going to um, try and work out how to play most of the songs <laughs> guitar. So nice. I'm, I'm going to have a cup of tea with Matt and we're going to um, start work. So I can uh, do that, really. <laughs> how nice. <laughs> what would you say is the best thing about being a musician? Uh, I mean, the best thing, the best thing is being able to connect with people and for a song to um, touch people before you ever even went to the, their city or their, their um, country. Yeah. And that never, that never stops, that never ceases to amaze me. Like, mm. um, you, know, you know, any, everyone, if you like music, you'd you understand, and I'm sure you do, but mm. <laughs> it can be a moment in your life where a song just sums it up for you. Yeah. And that could be the first song you hear by a band or an artist. And you buy the record, then you go and see them play a gig. They have no idea this has happened, but they sort of do because you're there and enjoying the show, and you can that that a shared experience. And yeah. I think making records is all well and all, it's all fine, but that moment where you play uh, a special show or you know a festival or something, and everyone's with you. Mm. Yeah, that's the, that's the moment where you get the um, the uh, the reward. And the... Yeah. What's been your biggest inspiration, like throughout? being in Band of Skulls or as a band what's your biggest inspiration do you think well like I said I think uh, you know when we were kids obviously we looked up to different bands and um, yeah and you know we wanted to be a rock band go on tour and make records but since you know we have done those things it really is our, each other you know like we are it, you know we still have to pinch ourselves now and again to we're very fortunate to um, do what we do. Yeah. So, yeah, it, it is. It, it's it, it's inspiring to sort of see what we've achieved, and it, it makes you think what, what's possible from here. You know, like, mm. we've um, kept very true to ourselves, I think, and we haven't had to change for any, for any reason. We've yeah. not changed our music. So yeah, it is us, you know, as it as it looks, and um, yeah, we just carry on. I think. Yeah. What do you see in the future for Band of Skulls? I know it's a quite a cliche question, but... I mean, we're going to go on top of this record. Mm -hmm. I think when you make your first record, it's almost like that's done and you can almost... It's very easy to relax and just enjoy the ride. But um, now we seem to be always writing. I mean, there are songs that didn't quite make this record and I'm already losing sleep trying to finish them. <laughs> and... You know, from from my point of view, trying to finish the other bits that I need to do. And yeah. Yeah, I think that's really the future. Like, as soon as you finish a piece of work, you've already moved on to the next thing. Mm. So, um, hopefully, when we can go on tour with this record, um, that will inspire what we do next. And yeah, mm. and we'll, we'll be thinking about that pretty much straight away. Yeah. So. Have you got any good announcements coming up that you can tell me about? <laughs> oh, like an exclusive thing. Like, <gasps> <laughs> but, um, that's one thing. Um, obviously, well, we are planning to be in England for, for the festival season. Oh, um, good. Yeah, we, we are. We're, we're, make, we're available, so we're, we're waiting <laughs> on a couple of um, phone calls, and we really hope to be able to play some of those. I can't. I don't know which <laughs> ones, and, 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 and that's when fine. And why and what, but I, that's definitely in our. Brilliant. Know, yeah. Okay.